Happy Marnie's Day. Let's continue Skernia's journey. What I'm going to do is read both translations in one video because they're only a, it's only a short section, just for breaking the tale down um, for some simplicity, and then at the end make some comments. So I'm going to go straight into it. It's going to be verses 10 to 13 of Skernir's Journey, as translated by Carolyn Larrington. Skernia said to the horse, It is dark outside. I declare it's time for us to go over the dewy mountain through giant realms. We'll both get there, or the all-powerful giant will seize us both. Skernia rode to giant land to Gimir's courts. There were savage dogs tied in front of the gate in the wooden fence surrounding Gerd's hall. He rode to where a herdsman was sitting on a mound and greeted him. Tell me this, herdsman, as you sit on the mound and watch all the ways. How I may come to converse with the young girl, despite the dogs of Gimir. The herdsman said... Are you doomed, or are you dead already? Conversation you shall never have with Gimir's excellent daughter. Skernia said, The choices are better than simply sobbing for a man who is eager to advance. For on one day all my lifespan was shaped, all my days laid down. So that's the end of the Carolyn Larrington translation. Let me just switch books, my books, uh, and we'll go for the Crawford translation. Skernia said to the horse, it is dark outside. Time for us two to ride over dewy mountains, to rush beyond the homes of men. Either we both will come back or the mighty giant will take us both. Skernia rode to Gimir's house in Jotunheim. There were fierce dogs chained up outside the fence that surrounded the hall where Gerd lived. Skernia rode over to where a herder sat on a mound and said to him, Tell me, herdsman, sitting on that mound and watching all the roads, how can I get past Gimir's dogs for a chance to talk with the young lady Gerd. The herdsman answered, Is this your death day, or are you already dead? You'll never have a chance for a conversation with Gimir's good daughter. Skernia replied, There's always a better choice than cowardice if you have business to take care of. One day, long ago, my life was already shaped and my fate was fixed. What we have, verses 1 to 13, is a few things to break down. Firstly, that Skernir is entrusted with a mighty task by Frey, Njord and Skardi, which says a lot for Skernir really. Um, there's some author's comments about Skardi's role or being referred to Frey's mother at this point. A lot can debate that. Um, obviously there's theories that Skardi is not of the Vanir, so that Frey and Freya were born of Njord and possibly Nerfus or possibly Yord and I personally favour the Yord connection that that comes with you know issues of its own also um just because of semantics we've got Frey, Freya, Njord and Yord would 
work in a semantic way that does you know then raise the theory or questions of well that can't make sense because yord is the mother of four which would then make for the brother or half brother of Frey and Freya that could then make some sense as to why four gets so angry when that first war has broken out between the Aesir and the Vanir but they then all it really does is create theories and debates and complexities that there just are no answers to um recently it was i suppose some focus was brought to me about nerfus and that as a theory um and a follow-on line of thinking that once we have peace between the Aesir and the Vanir. There are some events that happen. Njord, Frey and Freya go to Asgard. Mimir is one of the hostages, if you like, that are sent to Vanaheim. And Mimir is executed by someone. What we don't have names as far as I'm aware at this moment in time that the recorded this video this could be why whoever Njord's wife was prior to Skardi um, would likely it would make sense would be the ruler in Vanaheim and responsible for the death of Mimir which you know is something that doesn't break the Asir Vanir peace, but it would not have helped relations between them, and there's a whole thing there to unravel. I think really it's as is quite often in the poetic Edda female deities and beings get a shorter end of the stick than the male counterparts. Um, I guess to some extent that's also covered in the Havamal. It does... It does lend itself, really. There's a lot of blank spaces, and I'll go on about this quite a lot in a lot of my videos, that the blank spaces are the areas that ask questions can lead to some conclusions which you can arrive at through application of logic it's just not always clear and I really feel the whoever is the matriarch in Vanaheim we, there's not a lot to go on um, I think the other thing going back to the poem um, is obviously this is a before we get into the heavy stuff let's say Skernia is trust entrusted and trusted really by Njord, Skardi and Frey and it has a lot of ramifications towards the end of whatever timeline or not so much a timeline but a process of events that have serious ramifications for Frey. That's maybe just when we get through the rest of the poem and the things that get said. Um, but it is rather interesting. So, two translations in one video because it's just a short section because the next section, I don't think I can really break that up. There's just a lot of things said and we'll get into that 
later in the week. So some waffle, the translations, etc, etc. Thank you for listening. Do take care. Goodbye.